Recorded live in Balcata, Western Australia, the hoon capital of the world, this is Talkin' Power. Gap is what happens uh, when you hold to the floor and crush the man next to you. There's space in between your back bumper and your front bumper. We, uh, in the South, we refer to it as the Gap Band. Well, I think, you know, Formula One is for grown-ups. Okay, welcome to the Talk and Power podcast. We are up to episode 28, and it is a Friday night. It's a Friday night. It is a fish Friday and chip night. night. It was fish and chip <laughs> night in the house of the chamber. And, and that's why that's why uh, we're doing this here, because Friday mm. nights, I like to come home. I like to enjoy some fish and chips. I like to be a true wog, and as you can see, I'm wearing my, my thongs and my socks. <laughs> And uh, enjoy, and this is something new for Talk and Power, we're going to be doing uh, wine reviews. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're starting with, uh, it's uh, Annie's Lane, 2008 vintage, 10 so, years old this one. So, that's a good year, is it? I, I don't no, know anything about wine. Oh, okay, All right. It's not a bad drop, actually, I don't yeah. drink wine, but it's yeah, not I, bad. I, I, look, I've got to give it a taste. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a, there's a hint of, um, trying to, trying to pinpoint it. Grapes. All oh, right. Okay. Grapes. Is that what's in there? Fair enough. <laughs> Definitely grapes. Actually, that's borderline bidding. <laughs> to no. be honest with you, the reason it's open is, uh, I used a bit of it on the fish and chips before. Oh, okay. <laughs> and in the tomato sauce for tomorrow night. <laughs> Yeah, so just to fill you in, if you're watching the video version, we're actually recording this from Simon's house. We've had to change in schedule because I have to go away next week for work. So we're, we're doing this a little bit early. So And I wasn't going to give up on fish and chip. Nah, nah, <laughs> no, neither should you. Neither should you. Big weekend in motorsport we had. It was huge, actually. We had a lot, lot happening, a lot going on. Um, V8 Supercars, Tasmania 400. Yeah. It was... Um, Look, I mean, for the Blue Oval guys, it wasn't the, the best race. Disaster, but yeah, tragedy. Yeah. Something oh, look, like I mean, second on the Sunday, we'll, we'll, we'll take that. Yeah, but, you know, you look at the overall results. I'm trying to find my notes here. The, the Tickfords are the ones that are disappointing, or PRA, formerly known as PRA. The Tickford um, cars are, have been disappointing for the year. The top 10 is two Fords. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, I don't know. You were saying earlier, you reckon there's an aero problem there. There is an aero problem. There's no doubt about it. The VB, sorry, VB. the ZB, <laughs> the fair lane, has a, has a definite aero Mazda advantage. Six. Yeah, the Mazda, the Mazda 6. 6. There's no doubt about it. But any anyone that listens to this podcast will think that I'm just biased. biased. So <laughs> take that as you will, listeners, anyway. Look, so, the, the, so um, mm. just, just out of curiosity, any news on... Uh, if the Fords are getting a different car for next year? No, there's been no announcement yet. Nothing. No, nothing you at all. You would think that they would be onto the R&D stage by yeah, now, wouldn't yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a commitment to go with a Falcon next year, but beyond that, there isn't a commitment from from the Ford team. So it's interesting because the Falcon next year will be three years out of manufacture, so yeah. it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But anyway, that's that's what they're, they're doing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a bit of a sad deal. Mm, it is. They, it is. they did something similar to this with the... XE, didn't they? Or well, the XE race. The XF had a six-cylinder. There was no factory. Yeah, no, there was. No, that wasn't Group A compatible. So at the same time, we ran. Actually, didn't you, Dick Johnson was working on some four-wheel drive version back then? Oh, okay, no, I'm not aware of yeah, that. Yeah, turbocharged six-cylinder four-wheel drive. Yeah, I think they built one prototype. Obviously, it was a, a success story because. You know, went into production. Oh, no, hang on, it didn't. <laughs> anyway, 
anyway, tell me, tell me about the... Uh... Look, the Saturday race was interesting. I've never seen it before. And if some of our listeners can let us know, maybe it has happened before, but we had three tyre changes. So they were, instead of changing all four or just two, they were changing three. So the really? the front left-hand wheel was left as is. Now, we all know Tasmania doesn't really use that. It's a, it's a left-hand track, left-hand turning track, especially with that tight hairpin. But still... Um, I would have thought a four tire change, but no, everyone went with a three tire. So, do you think it was um, quicker? I don't think so. I guess there's uh, less room for error. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's one tire not being changed. You mm. know, the Sunday race certainly didn't have that because it was a longer race, obviously. But the Saturday race, it was the first time I've seen, first time I've seen a three tire change. But if you've seen it before, let us know because I'm I'm curious to know. The other interesting thing um, was. I felt it felt like to me that uh, Craig Lowndes gave up his spot pretty easily to Van Gisbergen on the on the Saturday. Um, I don't know if they were on a, obviously on a different strategy. They're arguably from the same team, but they're they're kind of not. Yeah. Um, he gave up his lead quite easily to Van Gisbergen. As it turned out, um, you know, it, it didn't it didn't factor into the results at the end of the day, but because. Um, Shane's early pit stop, um, I think that pitted way too early because his tyres went off quite quickly. Yep. So maybe Craig knew something that, that the rest of us don't, but I just felt that he gave up his lead quite easily. Um, so, yeah, Jamie Wincup went on to win on the Saturday. Craig coming in at second. And James Courtney, good to see the um, the former HRT team. Ryan Walkinshaw, United Racing, we should be calling them now. Yeah, yeah. Now, Andretti's... Uh, mm. yep. And Michael Andretti and Zach Brown as well was part of that. Now, Zach Brown actually, obviously, he was in Melbourne for the Melbourne round. He was part of the team there as well because of his McLaren commitments. So yep. he was there as well, but he didn't come to Tasmania. But, yeah, it's good to see that they're up there, those guys. Hmm. We had Fabian in uh, fifth spot and Van Gisbergen with tyres going off at a great rate of knots coming in sixth. So, so where's, where's that left the championship now? Oh, well, after the Sunday race, it tightened up the championship significantly with uh, Van Gisbergen um, practically. He did finish the race, but it was a practical DNF with his yeah. issues that he had with the pedal box, which I want to talk about. I'm not quite understanding. Look, obviously, the two are linked. So the throttle revving up and the pedal box, the brake balance are uh, tied together somehow. But... It makes me wonder how I think we've gone too too far forward with technology where we can have this happening to a race car. So basically his brake balance, they made an adjustment in the brake balance. In turn, it's had some adverse effect to the throttle position. So when he's braking, especially at the hairpin, it was going up 15% in throttle. Yeah, so so you know how you're talking about technology. Mm. So you're looking at it from the perspective that some sensor error or something like that. Okay, let's have a look at the old school brake bias pedal assembly. So you've got the pedal there. Mm. You generally have uh, the two master cylinders mm. on a crossbar, Yep. right? And you're winding that bar. Mm in and out and that's changing the pivot between the two right you don't think that it was just wound too far across and it was pushing the accelerator pedal at the same well, time well it, it potentially <laughs> could be because you know they seem to, to no, I find it hard comments. to believe that there would be some sensor in the braking system that affected the throttle yeah well obviously mark dutton's comments led me to think that because he's necked out he's used the term he's necked out the brake balance so, which would indicate that the the the, the rod that yeah, you're talking rod. about has gone all the way over. <laughs> well, but you know, surely there is you would check allowance that. <laughs> for that not to foul with anyway. I, I really don't know. Teams that are turning over millions of dollars and employ hundreds of people, you would check that. I would have thought so. Oh, maybe we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. <laughs> millions of dollars being invested into race teams with the, the Ferrari team, but we'll, we'll get to that a bit later on. For the listeners, if I start to slur my words, then, you know, it's a good drop. I mean, let's not forget, it's 10 years old. It's matured. <laughs> so, yeah, on the Sunday, it was great to see our mate Craig Lowndes. I say our mate because he's a year older than me. <laughs> so he's, he's our age, we'll call him. He took his first win in over two years. So it was great to see him up there take a win. Uh, got home ahead of Scott McLaughlin and Jamie Wincup. 
and James Courtney in fourth. So again, the mobile boost, uh, mobile racing team up there. Good to see Jack LeBrock, outstanding drive in fifth place. Did some really great things, uh, Jack LeBrock. And it's good to see him come out from the shadows of Super 2 last year, or the, um, yeah, the Super 2 series. I think he's making his way quite well with the Jonathan Webb team, Techno Motorsports. So it'd be interesting to see how the the, um, the cars go at Phillip Island. If you recall back to Phillip Island last year, we had huge issues with exploding tyres. Hopefully we don't see a repeat of that and they've sussed out their their tyre issues on the high-speed track of Phillip Island. So Formula One, we had the Bahrain race. Now, my apologies, you might be listening to this podcast and the China race has already been, but we, we, we're recording this before the China race has, has <laughs> happened. So, But the Bahrain race has happened, and I, I honestly think that Mercedes were played. I really do. I think they were played by Ferrari. And if, if they weren't, Nick, it is a master Ferrari, stroke. Ferrari hires one of the best strategists in the world this mm. type of thing and whatever they're paying him they should probably give him a raise look and and sebastian as well i i think coming in two laps earlier going to a soft valtteri came in two laps later went for a medium it was a foregone conclusion that everyone was adamant that they were on a two-stopper ferrari so they brought Bottas in to do a one-stop, put him on the mediums and get him out of sync. And it was a foregone conclusion that Mercedes were going to win that. It didn't pan out that way. It did not pan out that way. And it was really great to see Sebastian at the end of the race. I don't know if you heard the commentary at the end of the race, but he's on got on the radio and said, Mamma mia, mamma mia, these tires are gone. E davvero. <laughs> I've got to actually play that in our introduction in the future. I love it. It's 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 amazing. He goes, Mamma mia. Well, listen, you know, as long as uh, Ferrari's winning, I'm not going to be complaining. So. No, I actually thought it was a... I, I really enjoyed this race. I felt that it it um it, it, it had a lot... It, there was a number of races going on within the race. And a big, big shout out to Pierre Gasly. I think that was an amazing, amazing to come in fourth. What, what's happened to the Toro Rossos? They've got a Honda... And they've just come to the... I don't get it. I think the guys at McLaren might be scratching their head at the moment. They've switched to Renault's. <laughs> a, a honda power Toro Rosso was distinctly faster than a Renault-powered McLaren. It was. Well, you know, maybe Honda all this time has been giving up reliability for speed. <laughs> I, I, I really... It's, the only thing that I will say, I, I, the, the Toro Rossos are already on to engine number two for the year. So yeah. these guys, Pierre Gasly and Brendan Hartley, who we'll talk about a bit later, they're going to cop a whole lot of grid penalties as we progress through the year. Yeah, now, now, speaking of rule changes, mm. it is clearly evident that Americans own Formula One. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this, this meeting was had at the Bahrain race prior to the race with the, the team leaders. Mm. Yeah, I, I want to quote this because this is so American. Uh, Formula One aims to create a more spectacular show with the use of cheaper, simpler and louder <laughs> engines compared to the current hybrid V6 turbocharged formula. What do they want it to sound like? A Mustang or something? That- no, I think the, the hybrid uh, has been a lot quieter than the years have gone by, but I think they, they, they've probably gone too far the other way, made them a bit quieter than what they needed to. I, I think going louder, I don't have a problem with that, but I don't know how they... There hasn't been much of a uh, talk around how they make it chimp, cheaper and no, simpler. you can't make... You cannot make motor racing cheaper, even limited classes. Mm. G-Gas is a classic example. When that class came out in the drags, it was, well, it still is, Ironhead 750 Carby, you know, cast available manifold, pretty basic deal. Now we're at the stage where people are getting custom blocks made with yeah. a smaller journal size on the main. They're all running Honda or Mitsubishi or whatever journals on the big ends. Everything's, you know, like either titanium or mm. the gudgeons are tiny, cassidium coated, it, pull them weight out, dry sumps. The carbies, they're spending, you know, thousands, literally thousands of dollars. There is yeah. no way of limiting how much you're going to spend. The only way you could possibly do that is if you had someone 
that supplied an engine. Now, in Indy, they've used this formula for some of the lower classes. So there's one engine builder supplies all the engines, mm. right? And it's and it's a deal that they've done. They're going to be this much per power plant, yeah. right? To try and have all these different manufacturers, what are you going to do? They're always mm. going to find the, the most expensive or, or at least the most uh, exotic material to build the components yeah. out of the you know make everything lighter make things take him to the the absolute edge of self-destruction i remember mm. um oh, lane i forget his second name he used to be one of the mechanics on the williams team he's got a workshop here uh race talk i think it's called okay um and he said to me when he was racing for the team if, it, if the Formula One car crosses the finish line and explodes into a million pieces, the engineers have done their job properly yeah. in terms of they've maximised the amount of usage out of every single part. Obviously, you want them to win the race at the same time. No point if they came in last and exploded, but mm. nonetheless, yeah. that's the the basis of it. Mm. So I, I don't understand how they intend on doing this. And anything that they do, like limiting engines and limiting transmissions, it detracts the show, yeah, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Well, know. the, the three-engine rule, it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out this year. I mean, as Lewis, uh, we didn't touch on it, but Lewis had to start from ninth because he took a five-spot pit... Uh, uh, penalty. Penalty. <laughs> Is that the, the word you're looking that for? That was the yeah. word. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Uh, because of um, gearbox change, so you know it doesn't just affect the lower rung teams. It does affect. It has a, a tendency to affect the higher rung teams as well. And um, you know, I think that played into the result of the race. I think Lewis was coming on pretty hard at the end of the race, but um, obviously started from too far back to begin with. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know whether you've seen the Mercs, you know, at full noise yet. I think. Um I don't know. They're probably keeping a little bit tucked away. Well, he had it in party mode, apparently, on one of the laps where he passed three cars in down the straight. That was awesome. That was a really good move, actually. So he switched, well, allegedly switched it to party mode, had the DRS on and had the toe on Alonso and got around three cars. Great move, braked at the end of the main straight, got around uh, the three of them. It was awesome to see. They call that party mode at Mercedes. Yeah. It's a button you press for party mode. <laughs> Big high speed lean out or something. <laughs> so some of those rules that you were talking about, they, they also touched on, it wasn't just in the technical department, it was also about revenue. So they're talking about a new revenue distribution criteria. Must be more balanced based on um, meritocracy of the current... Meritocracy, oh yeah. my God. That's the word this generation's been looking for. <laughs> That'll replace mediocrity. <laughs> it will. There you go. All you millennials, that's what you should be basing your life around. And reward <laughs> success for the teams and the commercial right uh, holder as well. But you would expect that the teams that already have the most money mm. would win. Yeah. So if you're rewarding them on their merits, I mean, what else is there other than race wins? Are they going to reward them on, oh, you know what they're going to do, Nick? They're going to have like the old drag racing award, the uh, best presented car. Oh, yeah. You get yeah, a check yeah. for that. Yeah. Best yeah. crew, best crew and car. Best paint job, best, best engineered. Rap. Yep. Anyway, it's, um, if you haven't seen those, the plans for the future, get to the F1 website. It's, they're all detailed there. And I thought it was um, uh, quite interesting. Some of the other things, just out of Bahrain, I wanted to touch on was the pit stop for the uh, Kimi Raikkonen. What an absolute debacle. Yeah, yeah. Now, this poor gentleman's actually broken his leg in two places. Yeah. The, the drama was that the tyre actually never came off and obviously never went back on again. Now, the sensor, Kimi went to go because the light went green. What the sensor failed to detect was the wheel coming off and going back on again. The sensor detects if a wheel's on the car. So they've taken three wheels off changed those three wheels put them on the fourth one hadn't come off but it didn't realize that a tire had never come off in the first place so when they put the other three on it's gone green and he's taken off yeah yeah so it was really disappointing to see uh he's making a recovery but yeah he won't be i don't think he'll be taking part in much races this year the, the mechanic yeah well i mean how in the old days they had the the 
gone. Lollipop man. Yeah. We need yeah. to go back to that. Really? It's simple, yeah. Really? It's a guy. Do you think we should go back to a H pattern shift as well? Carbies? I, 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 I'm not saying that, but a lollipop guy, he knows when the wheels are on. Get rid of the wings. Oh, I'm fun. just saying the lollipop so, dude's got to come back. The day after mm. at Monaco, mm. they have the vintage cars, I've heard. Yep. And I watched a doco on it just recently. And, uh, yeah, they're still cool. They are cool. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The H pattern. So maybe, maybe that's mission. the go. <laughs> Look, I don't know, but I, I, all I'm saying is a lollipop dude, you can't go wrong. He knows he knows what's going on. I just think that we're kind of beyond that now. The light is a lot, you know. Well, yeah. But maybe there needs to be someone at the end of the light. It doesn't have to be automatic. The light needs to understand the wheel's got to come off and go oh, back on again. AI. AI. <laughs> That's going to be the end. <laughs> So yeah, we'll we'll talk more about Formula One that makes a special you know what? appearance. They in. could they could uh, make it automatic so the car can't move. Mm. It it needs to be something. We can't have that happen again. Now, funnily enough, it happened to Ferrari in Melbourne as well, but the the stakes weren't as high. Yeah, it was during practice, but this cannot happen again. Okay, you heard that from Nick. It says I as I take a swig of wine. <laughs> Grape juice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, MotoGP. Oh, yes, well, the MotoGP. Has it started? Will we be talking about this in two weeks' time? I reckon we will. Yeah. Guaranteed we will. Has the rivalry started again? It has for sure, Nick. It never, I don't think it ever Did ended. it ever go away? No. I mean, there was a, like a truce, like this sort of public relations truce that occurred... Um, last year or 2016 when um, they shook hands but I, I, I'm not convinced that the says I as no. I'm looking for my notes yes, so am I. <laughs> How far, I buried the wine the, uh, yeah maybe maybe, maybe we should do this I'll, again I'll maybe we should <laughs> I like let's the Friday right, I like the Friday night feel let's let's see uh, Shit, where have I done with it the, yeah the I, you know what I was looking for it before and I couldn't find <laughs> have I dropped it off no there they are under the Mustang of Craig Burns, which we'll tuck on, touch on a bit later. Oh, yes. No, well, let's touch on it now. Grudge yeah. Kings. The Grudge Kings. Look, we said in our last podcast, the only reason why I brought it up was we, we said we'd cover some of the cars. Now, Poe's doing a great... Well, he's... Yeah. He's, uh, he's the Donald Long of Australia, isn't he? He is. He is. But he's doing a great job in on his social media pages, releasing one car each day. And yep. he's been true to form. Each day, another car comes out yep. and we get to learn. Not a lot about it, but, I mean, he touches on... Now, some of these cars I didn't even know existed, to be frank. I really yeah. didn't know. There's some new cars here that I have never heard or seen of before. So You need to get to Sydney. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm actually thinking of going. Uh, I'm just going to just head on over there, I think. Yeah, it's, it's a different scene. But, I mean, look, I think the scene's growing over here. Mm, uh, definitely. You know, it's just uh, going in a, a, a sort of different direction. Over there, they... I mean, I haven't had a good look at the mm. cars that he's released so far, but I don't think there's any stock bottom end LSs in there, is there? No, no, neg- negative. No. No. Yeah, that's jeez, I'm really <laughs> God, he goes, he goes the complaints, <laughs> the complaints are gonna... settled far right up now. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that these guys are taking it seriously, and that's the yeah. difference between WA and the East Coast. Yeah, um, you know, pretty much. Just about all those cars in that list run mm. fours. Yeah. But have you, I mean, some of these cars are really taken a liking to, like in particular, Rob Godfrey's 872 cubic inches, Choices Flooring, LH Tirana, four kits of nitrous. What about Craig Lewis's uh, I like twin that. turbo? I like that Cortina. too. I like that. I like that a lot as well. Who took out Grudge Kings last year. Mm. Yep. Yep. I like that a lot as well. Um, also, I didn't mind um, Kit Hunter's VL V8 Turbo as well. That was pretty cool. And, of course, Dominic Rigoli's 300SX. That's that's when we've talked about that car a lot on this there show. There is but... everything in there. There is rotaries. There are turbo mm. sixes, turbo V8s, blown V8s. Yeah, yeah. And I also like David Hillier's uh, Extreme Concrete Naturally Aspirated Tirana as well. I'm not, I'm not a Tirana person, but two of the cars I've pulled from this list 
I've got to say, I really like yeah. the Alex but you, and the You've got to say, Craig Burns, Street Car Fabrications. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steel roof and quarter panel. Yeah, yeah. Mustang. I'm I'm hoping that car gets. I mean, it, it's not completed in that photo, but I'm I'm hoping it gets done in time. Well, he owns the chassis shop. Yeah, yep. I guess you'd work flat out on it, wouldn't you? Mm. So yeah, if you're not familiar with these cars, head on over to Poe's um, Facebook page, Grudge King, Grudge Kings, and uh, just have a look there at some of the cars. And every day, another one of the third two gets released. We're only up to seventeen, so they're only halfway. Yeah, and there's yep. some pretty hardcore cars. Oh yeah, there, there is definitely. Hmm. And it's a full entry as well. There, he's got the thirty-two. Yeah. So he had the thirty-two a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I think a couple of days after he announced it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Apparently in the US, this is a big thing. Yeah. Okay. Steel roof and quarter panels. Yeah. That's the latest. Yeah. You know. So uh, that, that's the thing though with this stuff that goes on on the side, like the radio racing at the moment. Um, it's only as good as its promoter. Mm, yeah. You know, and it's all right to like have a radial car and say that this is where it's at, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and follow pages, radial life, have the stickers on your car, etc. Mm. But um, it really is the promoter that makes it happen. Like yeah. Donald Long, um, yeah, he's doing a fantastic job. Mm. And this is what everyone in WA, or actually not just WA, the whole of Australia needs to sort of think about that if. You know, we've seen the 10.5 come and go, mm. right? We're in the middle of the radial boom. Uh, if this becomes the the new standard, then mm. that's what it's going to be. Yeah, yeah. No, most definitely. Okay, MotoGP. What, a, what an amazing race. It was a... It was um, really threw a spanner in the works. I think the weather certainly threw a spanner in the works. I... Once again, I haven't been following MotoGP for many years, so if one of our listeners can get on and let me know, but I've never seen a start like that before. So Jack Miller got pole position. Yep. However, he didn't change tyres for the start of the race. The rest of the field did. So they've had to start from, in theory, pit lane. Now, for whatever reason, they just, there was too many bikes starting from pit lane. So they actually started the bikes from the back of the grid. So Jack Miller was the only one on the grid. Then there was the whole grid, which was empty. And then the rear of the grid was the rest of the bikes. Some great photos out of that. It's, it's awesome. It's really, you really got to see it to believe it. It's, it's something I've never seen before. And if, if it has happened before, I'm sure maybe it has, but I've, I've never seen it before. So, all right. So qualifying yeah. was in the wet. Qualifying was, no, it was, it no? was dry. It was, it was more dry. dry. Yeah. It was dry. Mm. And who got pole? Jack. Jack, Jack got pole. He got pole. In, in the dry? Mm. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah, because you know, yeah, if you had a one in the wet, you would expect that because the guy's a bit... Mm. He's not all there. He's mm. definitely crazy. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so he has elected... So what did the, the weather must have changed then? Because they would have had to have made a last-minute call on the tyres mm. and then go into the pits. Yeah. Yeah, so it started raining at the... I think it was... I can't remember how how much prior to the race it was but it was it was reasonable rain yeah and required everyone to change well they changed their tyres except for Jack it was yeah just so Jack already had wets on there or no Jack it, had actually had uh, slicks on there from what I understand yeah that sounds like him mm. yeah <laughs> yep he was able to hold that lead until the the four of Zarko Rins and um, Crutchlow came after him yep. Those yeah those three Zarko's, came after him pretty uh, hard Another crazy mm. dude. Yep. So on that first lap, did you see how much of a lead he had? Oh, it was a significant lead because he started out like yeah. a good 30, 40 metres in front of everyone yep. else. Yeah. Yep. yeah. But it was interesting. I think the talking point, unfortunately, for the race is not, not that. was, And not even his performance. He finished fourth in the end. Was unfortunately the tangle between Marquez and um, Valentino Rossi. Yep. Which I think will go on. The, the two are not talking now at all. And the Marquez went back to the Yamaha pit to apologise, and he was um, basically told to piss off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not welcome here. You're not, not uh, to look, come back. You like he's the last few Grand Prix going mm. back from last season. He tends to do that. Come in, 
you know, under people on the corner. I think it's getting to the point now. I mean, he did get penalised for that move. Yep. Right? But it's getting to the point now where MotoGP has to sort of say, if you're going to do that move repeatedly and repeatedly get overtaken, which is what has happened to him Mm. repeatedly, you need to get some sort of, you know, penalty. There has to be. Because, you know, he knocked Rossi out of the race and... There, there was no move there. There was no move nah, to be had. There was no. Yeah. You can't if you come in. If you come in under someone, and you can't outbreak them, then you haven't really pulled a move. All you've mm. done is slow them down. Haven't yeah, you? yeah, it's right. You know? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's backfired on him how many times now? Mm. You know, oh. Dovey's just gone. You go for it, buddy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll see you at the finish line. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's um. This rivalry, no doubt, will continue through the year. No doubt, through the season, it'll be interesting to see how how those two race against each other in the coming races. All right. I I know that um, the MotoGP never fails to excite. So this no. season, I don't think it's going to be any different. The points are a bit mixed up now, though. Mm, yeah. um, it would have been great to just see um, the Ducatis and. Uh, um, Yamaha. March away with the... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah it would be, be great to see Davizio, so just mark away and march away and, you know, have a big gap mm. as we're moving on into the season. But um, yeah. you're going to get these rain days and he, mm. unfortunately, isn't as good. There isn't... I mean, aside from Rossi uh, and maybe... Uh, uh, Vinales. Uh, no, I forgot his name now. Mark Marquez. Mm. Uh, the wine is kicking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a bit of a flush happening myself. <laughs> it's getting warm in here. Um, I don't think there's really... You know, you have to go back a few places before you start getting into the riders that really excel in the wet. Yeah. You know, yeah, like Jack yeah. Miller. Mm. Um, Zarco, I guess, is one of the other ones. We're just not used to him being you know because he's still relatively new to the class his mm. second season but i guess he's another one that uh, obviously performs well also in the wet mm. um but you know the, the strange thing with zarko they always talk about how good he is at conserving his rear tire yet every race i mean admittedly he normally goes a compound softer than yeah. everyone else yeah every race towards the end of the race he's out of rear tire yeah, he's out of tire yeah. gets this massive lead and mm. then maybe Maybe, Zarko, just a word of advice from us at Talking Power, maybe consider going one compound harder. <laughs> and, you know, you won't be able to go for it in the early laps, but you'll have a tyre at the end of the race. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, the Motorplex wrapped up. Yeah, Motorplex, we should touch on our local races and the championships and how they all fell into place. Yes. So, Russell Ladbrook, he took the win in top comp um, with a win over Aaron Deary. However, Stuart Moresby went on to win the championship in top comp. So, well done to Stuart. Yes, that's in the uh, AA Gas Mm. utility. Yeah, yeah. Now, those guys have worked hard. They've thought outside the square. They're running a four-speed transmission. And interestingly enough, apparently, I heard a rumour Zap was testing with a four-speed. Oh, right, okay. At that last event. Yep. Um, Gregorini Mm. went at 85. Oh, good Great great to see uh, those guys... uh, getting a handle on that. They've struggled mm. a little bit with the new... Uh, they're running a similar combo to the Moitz car, I believe. Five-speed yep. Liberty with a converter and a lock-up clutch. Um, some... Uh, yeah, it's, it was great to see Moresby take out the championship because I know how much work that team has put into that deal. Mm. And, and um, you know, they really started with basically nothing. Yeah. Um, and they've gone about that class in a completely different way fashion you know yeah. like, uh, when George said it it was with a small block in the Tirana mm. and you know the small block to the Hemi is the worlds apart yeah. you know so you're yeah. carrying a lot more weight etc etc I believe Alan Pulley has been giving him a hand with suspension on that car yep. so great for the Danini team mm. should give the sponsors a plug yeah yeah the Danini haulage but uh, I've got to tell you Russell Ladbrook mm. I have got that thing flying yeah you know, so... Um, well, that went a 64 in the final. Yeah, mm. yeah. And for those of you that don't, you know, like... So you got the top alcohol tune-up and then you got the double A tune-up. Yeah. Right? 
So top alcohol you're allowed to run 125% overdrive. They're limited to 72 in double A. Oh, wow. So massive difference. That's huge. Yeah. Yep. yep. So yeah, huge effort. When you consider how close that is to a top alcohol, you know, most top alcohol cars are run in that sort of range. I know that we've seen the the occasional 30, mm. um, you know, but, but usually they're between a 60 and a 40. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a good team will run a 40 if the conditions are right. So mm. to do that with 50% less overdrive is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. No, good on them. All right, and Super Comp, Jamie Chase, the ended up winning the championship. Well, listen, a big congratulations to Jamie. Sorry, Jeff no, and, he got and, he did get to the final. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah, Nick does it again. It wasn't me, Jamie. Your fault. <laughs> Uh, a huge effort for those guys once again just chipping away yeah um, they've been at it for a long time with that combination and uh, certainly seen the rewards congratulations to the chasties Jeff mm. uh, being you know very instrumental in the R&D side of CNR race developments yeah been around a long time yeah Jeff, definitely well. G Gas yep. champion super stock champion Jamie's won the Australian championship mm. too uh, and also uh, Ralph Lewis as well making he won the final in super comp as well Ralph yeah. Lewis now I think they were very close in the points in they the were end. yeah yeah he caught was, up uh, but they're still not enough I mean Jamie's win in the semi-final was enough to get home yeah so. yeah yeah. that's where you got confused yeah sorry yes. my apologies Jamie he's, he's, he'll be Nicole. listening he will be listening. <laughs> Nick writes these notes and then doesn't read them. <laughs> I've never read them either. But. <laughs> uh, in top sportsman, Johnny Bresic yes. won the championship. Yes, he did. He, um, I'll tell you a funny story about Johnny. I rang him up to congratulate him. Mm. Um, you know, those guys have come a long way in a very short space of time with that car. Mm. I think this is like the second... Or you know, second full season. They maybe have done three seasons, but yeah. I don't know that they've, uh, you know, had it that long. And it's his first season in. in well, it's the first season they've run. Uh, yeah. Top sportsman. Top sportsman. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Um. So uh, he was driving to when I rang him. He was driving to Victoria. Yeah. Okay. To catch the ferry. Mm-hmm. To Tasmania. Mm-hmm to go on holidays for his anniversary. Oh, right, okay. 30, 31 years married, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he had to drive across because he's got a, a clot. Oh, right, he okay. He couldn't risk going on the plane. So, uh, DVT. Clearly loves his wife. Mm. Yeah, drive all that way. Yeah. No, I know that's I amazing. Do, I would have said, let's go to Broadnest or something. <laughs> Mantra. <laughs> Mantra. Let's go to Mantra. <laughs> No, Albany. Albany would be close. Albany, yeah. It's about as cold as it's going to be. <laughs> anyway, top effort. Um, it is a top great effort. Great guys. Big battle there. Big mm. battle like uh, between him, Paul Down, yeah. and um, uh, and uh, Albie Bakranich. Mm. Uh, all season. Yeah. All were... season. Speaking of Paul Down, he got with him five points. He did. So... He did. I'll tell you, Johnny was shitting bricks. It's the mm. nicest way I could put it before the event because he thought, you know, this is my opportunity to win my first championship. And he worked hard. Those guys, every opportunity they get to run that car, they, they'll run it. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. Well, it came close because Paul actually won the final. Yeah. So he, um, he won against Jake Lane. Uh, but, yeah, obviously Johnny had done enough. Just enough. Just. just. Yeah. Like, when I say just, if he had gone out a round before, mm. um, you know, he would have lost yeah. the championship. Yeah. In Super Sedan, Marty Mirko, my arch enemy. Yeah. <laughs> I say that tongue in cheek. He's not my arch. Marty is a top bloke. He's a, he's a right. great guy. Um, yeah. And that team, once again, they work very hard. They run that car a lot. Marty works hard on his reaction times. They are consistent. They know how to dial it in. And that car is so reliable. Mm. And you know what? It's one of the most beautiful cars down there. When I say he's my arch enemy, I'm wearing my Sylvan hat. When I say that, so it's tongue in cheek. I know that. Yeah, I know. Oh, you you're know. letting everyone else know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's I. Okay. We we work. You, you well. actually you ran into Marty yeah, at all yeah, fast. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> no, he's this, a great guy. There was this cold tension in the air. <laughs> you know, I was waiting for the tumbleweed. <laughs> so Marty, he's um, his family's business is Merco Brothers, and I work for Sylvan, and we're competitors. Anyway, that's all right. It's all good. Anyway. 
Did you do any insider trading or anything no, like that? No, 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 no. He's a great, Calusi, great family. I, I know his brother as well. They're Calusi great people. price setting. Yeah, no, 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 no. We wouldn't do that. No, no, no. I'd like to. No, I'm oh, going to edit that out. <laughs> Tour the growers no, in Caribou. So, great to see those guys yeah. uh, take it out. He, um, you know, he is one of these guys that that is very patient and mm. knows when he's made a mistake. Yep. And, and you know, the one thing with Marty that I've learned over the years, he, a lot of racers have always got some bullshit reason why the car didn't do something mm. or whatever. He's not like that. Yeah. He yeah. just says, you know what, I stuffed up. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, great, great guy, great, great senior. Yeah. In the final, it was Lawrence Adamos taking the win over Nick Panagopoulos in his... All Greek final. Yeah. Wow. Adamos against... And the uh, uh, Panagopoulos. Panagopoulos car is also out of Con's workshop. Uh, uh, Monte, Carlo. Monte Carlo. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's a Monte Carlo. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, big yep. heavy car. It's over 3,000 pounds. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so that was how... That was uh, Super City. And in Super Street, we had... Jeez, this was really, this was really, really tight, this. So... Um, Darren Bakrinich, he would go on to win. Now, this is his first Super Street title, which I found... Championship? Yeah. So, Steph Darren. didn't get it? No. Jeez, it must no. have been close. Wow. They met in the semi, Steph and Darren. And Anyway, that's um, Darren gets his first championship in Super Street in Modified... He's been running for a lot of years. He has, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. why I found... I'm not saying that he should have won a championship before, but he's been going... He was racing when we were racing yeah, in yeah. Super Street, which was a long time ago. <laughs> mm. Supercharge Outlaws. John Ferguson won the um, the uh, grand final. Well, the drag, yeah, drag right. up a loser. Okay. Drag, drag up a loser? Drag up a loser. No, no, he kept he loves saying that. It was Power of Palooza. Power Palooza, that's Power it. Palooza. Power Palooza. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They've only really done three meetings in mm, that car. Yeah. And yeah. I think he's been in the finals at every one. Yeah, yeah. I it's think It's incredible. So. Yeah, that is, is incredible. Great. In the modified, it was Nicholas Rowe um, holding off to win his first championship. Now, this is his first year in Modified his as well. His first he's a, season he's in He's a pretty modified. good driver, yeah. Nicholas. Yeah, and his dad is a great mechanic. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. obviously got the car set up. Now, we were only talking about this car earlier today. I believe that this car is the car that Craig Geddes brought into the country. Now, funny story. So, the late and great Jeff Clark, Double B King, mm. we were in the States loading a container yep. out of uh, L.A., and I saw this really, really cute looking altered sort of, you know, tucked away in the corner. And uh, I said to the, the guy, you mind if I have a look at the car? And he goes, no, go for it. You probably know the owner. And I said, really? Anyway, he told me whose it was. And Nick, I fell in love with that car. Hmm. It was so, everything, it, it had been built for a four cylinder or something along those lines. So it was yeah, quite okay. a narrow chassis route, but it was that light that I could pick the whole car up. Yeah, okay. I stood up inside it. And get this, four-link rear end, strut front end. Oh, a strut front end. Yep. Tiny little struts. Now, the car came over here, and I think they were going to put a small block or something in it. Hmm. And it was that narrow that they couldn't get the engine in. Yeah, okay. Right? This, this is what I got told. Then it got sold a couple of times, and it actually travelled across... Uh, Australia mm. about three times yeah, okay. going back over east getting sold again coming back to WA back over east back to WA and I believe I'm not 100% sure but I believe it's got an LS in it now yeah okay and I think right. I think the LS must be a you know slightly narrower uh, deal one of the people that I own it, that I know that owned it he was going to put a 308 in it mm. and that seemed to fit not too bad yep and uh, one of my customers had it for a while um, he was going to put a small block in it and it, it was, yeah, it wasn't going to be a, an uncomfortable fit. Yeah, okay. So, yep. uh, but yeah, one of the coolest cars. If it is the same car, I've been told that it is. Mm. Um, uh, Ron Crosby owned it for a while, yeah. Oh, Ron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, that's when I saw it at uh, the first time, I, I was the first time I was in the States, then I saw it again at, um, you know, Hop. Yep. From Hop and Black fame. Yep. Uh Hop Cylinder Head Shop in... Mm. Um, uh, 
Kelmscott, yeah. I believe it is, A and K Cylinder Heads. Mm. Yeah. Uh, saw it at his place because Blackie was going to uh, do some work on it mm. and it was it was just being stored there. And then, yeah, Ron Crosby um, after that. So, yeah, it's done the rounds. Yeah, wow. But, so, yeah, great first season. That's incredible. It yeah, shows it you is. how good a driver he is. He's a very good driver. How good very that whole good. team are. Yep. So I got some I got some killer news. Yeah. This afternoon, the belt came in. Oh yes. It's been weeks, but it's here. The belt is <laughs> the here. The belt is here. That's why I sent you that photo because now I can start working out where stuff's got to go. <laughs> stuff's got to go. Yeah, yeah. Because I tell you what, it's a great. It's uh, yes, it looks awesome, doesn't it? It looked like you know, meant to be. Yeah, I, I'm. It's growing on me. Yeah. It's growing yeah, yeah, no, I liked it. I like it. So, um, if you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the XY, and uh, it's been a bit of a stumbling block because, as per usual with anything that I do, the belt is kind of an oddball size. Yeah. So, uh, and and the gamble was, so basically, what's happened is, I've made the billet idler bracket up. Right? Mm. I've drawn it on AutoCAD. And you'll see it in the videos yeah. as they come through. Sent it off. Um, CNC shoppers cut it out. We've drilled the holes, mounted it. The reason we drilled the holes is because I was too lazy to measure them. <laughs> so, so it's part digital, part analog, that bracket. <laughs> so um, when I worked it out, I was kind of looking at it from the perspective of strength and, you know, not really thinking about the belt length. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I've gone to measure it. Now, your Hemis and most of you, your low mounted V. Um, Chevys and so on, they take a 1600 belt, mm. um, which I've got a few of because that's what we ran on the on the door slammer. This thing looked like it needed a 1700 belt, mm. okay, partially because the intake's sheet metal and it's a bit higher, yeah. and, you know. So uh, that was a bit of a stress because the closest you can get is 1694, mm. right? So, and you really don't know 100% whether they're going to fit. You can run a tape around it and hope. But um, till you physically got that belt, so yeah, it came in today, and uh, it fits. Mm. And Shelby um, threw in a smaller idler as well, okay. which has given us even more room because the dizzy was getting close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a step forward. So now I can make the belt guard because yep. that's a that's a requirement, yep. and um, we can start working on the fuel tank and r- run the lines and mm. hopefully. You know, I mean, obviously, it's going to be next season now. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully, we'll get there, and then we'll see what happens when we show up on a Wednesday night with a blown car. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> How quickly we get marched out the door. <laughs> oh no, no, looking forward to it actually, and we've had some great feedback as well on the XY. Yeah, so a lot of people want to get on board and help us out as well. So yeah, when we get a bit closer. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, we've had a lot of feedback. The video commentary has been really good as well. So thanks to everyone for, for your feedback and kind words. Thanks regarding... to Dave. Yeah, Dave too, thanks of course. To Dave, yeah, yeah. He's been pivotal. And he has. He's, he's, he's he has. Good and kid. Shelps. Shelps uh, got that all organised. John Shelping. Yeah, because those belts are bloody expensive mm. and, and I'm broke. So yeah. he said that he had some stuff there and he sent yeah. it over. Yeah, no, so, so shout out to those guys. And um, Wapadu Racing. Wapadu Racing. Actually, speaking of Shelps, he was telling me that um, he's building some radio cars and right. he's got some cars for sale. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a late model Camaro there, mm-hmm. right? So, not that I think they've changed the body again, but like Bumblebee, that, that yeah, shape. Yeah, so that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that uh, he reckons he could have uh, like LS you know, more or less caged up, pretty much ready for Android Tech mm. type deal. Uh, and he's sort of talking around 20 grand. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's got a Mustang there. Yeah, he's got okay. a Mustang for all the Ford fans out there. Uh, so not the current Mustang. The, this one, this shape. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Which I reckon... The is 05. That's the 05 one, that one. 05, 06. Yeah, it ran yeah. from 05 to uh, 14. Yeah. One. Yeah, I like this. Looks like a Mustang. Mm. The new one, I don't know. It's got the. I can't say that's it. That's the Ford the, Global. People are saying racist. That's the glo- Ford Global. Even the chick that advertises the cars looks like that. Uh, she's terrible. <laughs> she's terrible. I don't like her at all. 
<laughs> anyway, yeah, he, he reckons the same sort of thing. He could um, something like that, ready for radial racing. And he, you know, he's a crew chief on one of the the quickest two seven five cars around. Yeah, yeah you were saying I think they've gone six sixty mm. with it. Um, yeah, pro charge deal. Yeah. So anyone that's looking for a car, get in touch with us because I'll hook you up. And you can deal directly, and if four of you get together. You can bring a container over, mm. save a fortune in freight. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good buy, twenty grand. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's sort of what he's saying. You know, yeah. this is like roll cage struts, yep. rear end done. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, uh, for those of you that are listening to the podcast and don't have a visual, we're pointing to Frank Frank Selvo, good friend of ours, has lent oh, us for the for <laughs> Frank the Selvo of Come and Pick Up My John Force Poster. <laughs> yeah. He's given us a flag for this podcast, and that's in the background. And it's John Force's Mustang, that 05. The Mustang. real John Force. Yeah. When yeah. he was sponsored by Castrol yeah. and Auto Club. And Ford. <laughs> Ford. <laughs> All he, right. he, you know, he had a stellar career driving a GM product. He did, yeah. 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 Look, we don't begrudge the man for going back to GM. So, some big news in the radial front, actually, over here, speaking of radial cars. Mm. Uh, the VL, I forget which workshop it runs out of, but a, a six-cylinder VL uh, dipped into the fours on a 235. Yeah, okay. That's crazy. Which yeah, that's what today. I was going to say. Uh, how is Terry going on Drag Challenge? Oh, they just started today, but I don't have any oh, results. Yeah, right. Today was the first Yeah, day. yeah, because yeah. I haven't... Uh, Harry normally rings me up and mm. um, or texts me. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so he, he, he uh, I said to him, how come you're not going? And he said, I can't be bothered. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> He's going to do the, the one that they have, you know, Into, through Victoria. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was just, a, it was all going to be a bit of a rush. Mm. to get over there I think drag week's coming up yeah no that won't be till September Sep- or August, August August or September yeah yeah yeah. 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 yeah yeah oh it's not that far away no no I guess for someone like Harry that's into that pretty pretty big yeah it's a big commitment to, for him yep um, yeah he will need not even John, need to, John Ferroni yeah yeah John you know? will probably need to be start thinking about packing up and getting yeah. the, the stuff over there huge and, huge yeah. to do that and it is I, a big commitment all, all the competitors that do that from Australia incredible mm, yeah you know? yeah. so I heard a rumour that Terry's building or built a car for uh, Drag Week alright okay yeah so uh, he's going over as well I believe so yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. apparently he's built a um, another Commodore I mm. uh, don't know the details about it but I would imagine that uh, it's going to be a turbocharged deal yep so yeah, look forward to seeing uh, those Dude, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a great that, car. He's one the one, that, the one that, that he's got at the moment. V V C V C V C. Yeah, 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 absolutely lovely car. Yeah, nothing like a Peter Brock Commodore V C coming from really. a Ford man. Yeah, I know, but I love them. They're great. Yeah, mm. the V C V H. Do you wish Ford made an X E like that? I I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ultimate burnout competition this weekend at the Motorplex. Oh, yes. Some pretty big cars uh, heading over for this. Now, I saw a number of photos during the week of the number of cars. So, in the blown competition, there's 38 entries. Yeah. It's big, big lineup. Yeah, and this is part of the reason why I don't think drag racing is as popular as it used to be because you go down to a drag meeting and you can watch maybe, you know, 30 blown cars, but how long do you see them for? Mm, yeah, that's you know? right, yeah. On full noise, they're only, yeah, you know, six, seven, eight That's seconds. Right. Yeah. So um, they'll fill up the joint tomorrow night. I have no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, the demographics there too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? No, of course, of course. But yeah, it'll they'll fill up the joint, and it's, it looks like a big no, uh, number of entries heading over. As I said, thirty-eight blown cars, and not many of them. There's a few from WA, but there was quite a few coming from over east as well. So I got some rumours about the track. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I'll get to full on ones. Like please tell. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna mention it, the name of the company that, you know, has been the name's been dropped, mm. right? That that they are negotiating. Whether it's the deal's done or not. Whether I knew or not, I wouldn't say. But they want to get rid of the speedway. Would that be would they be allowed to? They want to... This is the rumour, okay? They want to uh, level the mound, mm. right? And build a circuit track. Yep. Okay? And get rid of the speedway all in one foul swoop. 
mm-hmm. not interested in the um, mud buggies. Yep. So uh, apparently the state government's gotten very nervous because there's some sort of unwritten rule or maybe it yeah, maybe it's I in think it's written. It's yeah. written that no, not not about the speedway. Oh, okay. No, no, no. McGowan's not worried about the speedway. Uh, the West Australian Sporting Car Club and Barbara Gallows, they don't want to have two venues that are competing against the... Um... Mm. So, the thing is, the real estate around Barbara Gallows is encroaching on that track. So, you know, it's debatable how much longer that track is going to be allowed to operate anyway. Mm. You know, I, I mean, I can't see that... It's the usual story where the city moves closer to the track. Yep. And then people complain about the noise and then, you know, they have to shut the truck down. We've seen it happen a million times with drag strips all over the world. So um, I guess, you know, if it happens, it happens. But, yeah. but it was interesting that they are sort of hesitant because, you know, it's going to be these two tracks competing. The Speedway, I mean, if they get rid of it from Quinana, I think it, me personally, after seeing... I. I believe it or not i'll watch the speedway tv show mm. and it's not a bad show i yeah. think it's i think it's well made mm. i think that if uh if we could put a show together at that level yep <laughs> anyway no, no I, I i do enjoy it and when they have king of the wings and stuff yeah. like that they get a crowd down there yeah so i don't know financially whether it's a smart move or not obviously the circuit racing that's a big move yeah yeah, it is. If they had a circuit racing track there, I would imagine that they would have continuous revenue from, like, RAC driver mm. training or, you know, people just wanting to practice, et cetera, et cetera. So... Um, but when you think about it, it's all about, I mean, the investor, it's a lot of money to put into something that you can only use on a Wednesday night, a Friday night, and a, and a weekend, arguably. $30 million is the number that's been bandied around. I, I think that... If the place was run, you know, look, whether people out there like or dislike um, Miosevic, whatever he was doing, he was doing right because mm. the crowds were there and, yeah. you know, everyone seemed reasonably happy, you know. So I, I guess if you went back to that, if you went back to running it like that, motivation, etc. Um, I think that place could be profitable. Mm, I mean, yeah. you know, uh, people used to always bandy around that they used to make a million dollars clear out of motivation. And it's not hard to when you sit down and do the numbers. Mm. And if you get a crowd there, you're going to be making money. But, you know, you know, today I went to a couple of workshops uh, and wasn't researching this didn't even know we'd, we'd be talking about this but um i had a couple of things to do a couple of parts to get machined up and so on and uh there is a general consensus that uh, you know most people don't agree with how the show sort of happens down there you know yeah. where the focus is not on on the cars the example that one person made was uh a car came out to do a skid and instead of telling people about the car like Stewie used to, mm. you know, because Stewie spent a lot of time educating the crowd, and that's very important because that yeah. adds value. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. Not just on the night, but in the future, because, you know, someone listening there, when he goes back and tells his mate, he starts talking about the fuel pump and the this and the that and the other, you know what I mean? Like, gives him a better understanding of what. Uh, what's happening but nonetheless this car came out and he was very keen to find out some information about this car and whoever it was i don't know i don't know you know obviously i wasn't there uh, but they were talking about hamburgers and he reckons they kept talking about hamburgers and what hamburger they were going to eat and so on the car did its burnout did its run down the track and i didn't know anything about it i didn't know who it was what motor was in it you know nothing just completely he was just he just said this we're here to you know because we're drag racing fans mm. we don't we don't come down here to bloody hear about what you're going to have for lunch or dinner so yeah a lot of complaints in that department the bongo drum thing and you know we tried the drifting thing 
really we should just stick to doing what we know how to do, which is drag racing. Yeah. You know, uh, and it'd be nice uh, if we if the commentary team talked about. I mean, look at how many championships were decided in one or two races. Yeah. yeah. I mean, can you imagine if Daryl Eastlake mm. was was uh, you know, oh my God, she she's done it. He's done it. It's like, it's it. Five points in it. I can't believe it. It's gone down to the what? You know what I mean? Like. Because it, it is racing at the That's end of right. the day, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So look, I don't mind Corey. I think Corey is not too bad. Corey I, Marriott, that is. I, I don't know. I haven't been down there. He, for he's that long. okay, and I know Richie's on the uh, from time to time, but I don't. I don't know if he was there on the weekend. Don't know. But I know. Don't know. Don't know. Rich, Rich Rich, is great Richie's well. uh, a great commentator, but yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that you need to have someone like Stewie that's got that depth. Yeah. You yeah. Know? No doubt. No uh, doubt. It would be good to get Stewie and Richie. Um, mm. back together yeah yeah. you know there was uh, you know they were great as a, they really bounced off each other you know mm. what I mean um, maybe they'd like to do a podcast together maybe mm. maybe you should reach out to them mm. and I think I think the th- the thing that's very difficult and this is where someone like myself would uh, not be any good at it is that if you've grown up around it mm. then you assume that everyone understands it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the thing. Uh, the average punter on the hill wouldn't know the difference between a dialing mm. and a index. Yep. Probably wouldn't know the difference between group one, group two, group three. Mm. And I mean, the most confusing out of all of them is uh, outlaws. we have got a staggered pro tree. Yeah. Like there was... <laughs> something dodgy going on when they came up with that idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have just one flash of amber, but you're not going to know when it's going to happen. <laughs> it's the luck of the draw. <laughs> At least if you both leave at the same time. And, and in the meantime, you've got the distraction of the other car. Like, you would want to be the slower car in, yeah, <laughs> in yeah. Supercharge Outlaws. All right. Four wide racing. We didn't have any pro mod at the four wide racing. Now, this is a battle of the spark plugs. So we got four wide racing at Vegas this weekend, or the weekend we just had, and then we, in a couple of weekends' time, we got the NGK four wide nationals. This one we just had was the Denso Spark Plugs oh. four wide nationals. There you go. Yeah. So Battle of the Spark Plugs. So in top fuel, we had Steve Torrance. Um, we had Densos in the um, in the Camry, but it's got NGKs now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Oh. Just in case you're wondering, we're supporting those that support Pro Mod. Yeah, there you go. Certainly. And in in Funny Car, we had um, JR Todd took the win, so um, they will head back there for the Four Wide Nationals uh, NGK version on the 29th of April. Big news in Pro Mod. I want to touch on it. Erica Anders is competing in Pro Mod and Pro Stock this year. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It is. It is. I think that uh, are they going to give up on these NA cars? I mean, the rest of society has. Elite Motorsports has got too much tied up in the NA oh, cars. I'm sure so. that all of the um, pro stock teams do. But what everyone needs to remember is that when pro stock truck, when the NHRA decided to unplug that, they just put it into comp. Mm. And, you know, there was reportedly a lawsuit or whatever. But, yeah. you know, really the pro stock guys need to slide into pro mod mm, that's what yep. needs to happen yeah the whole world is boosted now if you mm. haven't got boost you know no i'm hearing you it's just I how agree. it is it's just i mean I, I, you know i was one of the proponents of naturally aspirated cars i mm. love it pro yep. stock especially but the reality is that uh i, I think it's kind of irrelevant now mm. i mean yeah. how many people given the option of buying a two a turbocharged supercharged or naturally aspirated car are going to pick the naturally aspirated yeah, one. Yeah, you know, yeah. a lot of cars don't even. I mean, most of the diesels. I think just about all the diesels come factory with a turbo. Mm, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. I, I I agree with you. Anyway, she will be racing. Um, it's part of. It's it isn't. It isn't part of the elite motorsports. It's one of the engine builders from elite motorsports. His name is Jake Hairston in the Hairston Motorsports Camaro. Um, it's a twin turbo deal that he built. Now that's they're, they're going to sort of fly under the Elite Motorsports banner for the Pro Mod series as well. So if they've used the same technology as the uh, Pro Stock engine, same engine builder, so 
Well, you think about this. I mean, obviously, you're going to have less compression, mm. right? But if you can make 1,500 horsepower naturally aspirated, how much are you going to make with 40 pounds? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the, the scary thing is that Erica can drive a pro mod car. We, we have to remember that she's driven for Keith Haney last year in the PDRA as well. Yep. From event to event, I know it was a nitrous car, but still, she can get she can get around a, a, a five sixty five seventy car, no problem at all. The only thing though is a nitrous car and a blown car and an NA car, mm. right? Very the, the the way they respond is very similar. Yeah. You yeah. know, throttle response, etc. Uh, the turbo car, I don't know if it's the same. You mm. lose wheel speed in the turbo. Like when I say wheel speed, I'm I'm talking about the. Um, the uh, compressor wheel on the turbo. Yep, yep. You lose wheel speed when you pedal it, right? Mm. Then the recovery is not going to be the same. So yeah. it'll be interesting. I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah. And I think a lot of these cars now, they're auto shifted, auto this, mm. auto that. So, you know. Um, Being a walk in the park for Erica. Yeah, yeah hopefully the walk elite the guys park. will um, get a kick out of it and want to switch completely mm. over to Pro Mod. Can't wait. Cannot wait for that. Looking forward to the four wides. All right, my new segment on the limiter. Now, <laughs> oh, look, I mean, I love Formula One, but the debacle that happened on, uh, on the Bahrain race between Brendan Hartley and Sergio Perez, I'm still, my mind boggles. Now, I know you have a different view on this, but anyway, I'll just go through it. So, Brendan Hartley was a bit tardy getting away off the line on their formation lap. Sergio took it upon himself to pass him. That's fine. Now, Sergio didn't give that position back at the start of the race, or on their formation lap, failed to give that position back. So, they've given... um, Sergio Perez, a 20-second penalty and for for not allowing Brendan to regain his position. They also did the same, applied the same penalty for not, for, to Brendan for not taking back his position. So I'm not understanding which one it is. They've applied two penalties for the one incident. Okay, so like I said earlier, right, all Formula One is saying is that they're both idiots. Because he should have known better and he should have known. New Zealand, you were robbed. New Zealand. <laughs> the, the people of UE land, you've been robbed here. I'm sorry. I, you're, you're probably right. You're, you're probably, I don't know if Toro Rosso were smart enough to communicate that back to Brendan. That has yet to be seen. Even even if they communicated or didn't communicate or whatever, at the end of the day, you required to know flags, etc., etc. Mm. And if he was meant to be in that position, he was meant to be in that position. Yeah. So, you know, you probably find that if there was a steward's inquest or something that went down, one of them would have been going, well, he went around me. And the other one would have been going, well, he slowed down. Mm. <laughs> So, you know what? You're both idiots. There you go. There's your penalty. So, it wasn't 20. It was 30 seconds. Sorry, it was 30 seconds. To make matters worse, Brendan actually got a two-point penalty as well. So, anyway. I don't know why his pe- his penalty is harsher than Sergio's, but I just didn't understand how they can apply two penalties for the one incident. But that's my on the limit. You got something growing in your gears this week? Uh, not really. No. 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 No, I can't complain. It's Friday. It is. Had it's fish and chips. chips. I, had fish. You know, I can't believe I had it as well. Got to, got to uh, uh, give my boy a hug. Oh, beautiful. You know, before he's... he went to bed. So Hopefully we're not keeping him awake. <laughs> We've got the wines out. You know, uh, yeah, he was due for a feed. I'm surprised I haven't heard him. He's <laughs> probably outside listening. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I think we can bring the show to a close. You got anything else? Any other news or goss? Uh, no, not really. No? No, no. Um, in looking forward to getting some work done on the XY soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fingers crossed. Too. Yep, yep. Um, and, uh, you know, it's great. It was another great season down at the Motorplex. I mean, mm. you know, in terms of 
the actual show of the cars racing. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the best seasons yet. Mm, yeah. Know? All right. Well, we'll wind this one up. So thanks to all of our sponsors. That's All Fast Talk Converters. That's you, Monster Talk. Uh, Rob down there at Monster Talk. Stewie at WA Suspensions. Make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Podbean. Go to our Facebook page, Instagram, YouTube channel. Thanks to Frank for lending us this tonight as well. Um, and anyone else you need to thank as well? You know. Oh, I need to thank everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you all. Everyone that listens, give yourself a pat on the back. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, <laughs> that goes without saying. Big thanks to all of our <clears throat> listeners as well. Um, I want to thank my wife, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should. I should. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> and a big, yeah, and I thank you, Nicole, from me as well. And also to... Um, all of our people that do listen, share our our podcasts around and get people to subscribe to them, get, try and get our listener numbers up. We're working on a couple of things now that the, the season's over. Not that we were working on the, in, in the drags in any event, but now that the season's over, we're going to be working on a couple of things, Simon and myself, and uh, well, you know, and we're putting a couple of things together, not just the XY, but a couple of other things as well. So you'll see a heap more content coming your way. I hope if I find any time to get anything done. I'll find a time. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks, Simon. Thanks for allowing me to come here tonight. Yeah, Very thanks. Nice. thanks for coming, Nick. <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. Take care, Simon. See you in the street. See you, guys. Talking power stresses all characters and events on this podcast, even those based on real people are entirely fictional. All celebrity voices are impersonated poorly. We do not encourage street racing or the use of turbochargers.